In this video, we're given two exponential functions, and we need to graph those as well as their inverse. And if you don't know anything about exponential functions, one way of graphing them would be just to plug in a bunch of x values, get their y values, plot all those points on a uh, coordinate system, and then just connect all the points with a curve. Um, but to save some time, I'm going to use desmos.com to graph this. Okay, so. Here is my first uh, equation, y equals 2 to the x power plus 1 is graphed. So you can see the curve. Now, I'm very bad at taking this curve and putting it back on my paper. So to help me out um, putting that curve and, and doing it as accurate as I can, I'm going to pull up a table. And to get that table, I'm going to click this tool. Uh, it's like a gear. And it allows us to pull up a table. So we're going to click convert to table here and here is going to be a bunch of points and I'm just going to grab all these points and then put them on to my paper so now imagine this is my paper and we have our um, you know our table we're in here as well as a coordinate system and I'm going to plot all these points so I'm going to start with this first one it's negative 2 comma 1.25 so that's going to be roughly right around here actually um, negative 1 comma 1.5 is going to be right around here so very very close uh, 0 comma 2 right there 1 comma 3 here and then 2 comma 5 will be let's see right about here now let's go back to my graph as you can see on my graph it continues going up forever but as we go this way it's going to straighten out at about y equals 1 so that's what I want to reflect on my paper so here I've got y equals 1 right there so when I curve my um, exponential function it's going to straighten out right there and then I can move it all the way up like this and it goes up like that so that's about as accurate as we could get here I think so now we gotta graph the inverse now if you don't know anything about inverses the inverse of a function is just when we switch the x and the y so I'm gonna start a new table here and this let's just say we'll represent the inverse and that means that these two values have to change so now I have 1.25 going to be right there and then this is going to be negative 2 and then this is 1.5 and then this is going to be negative 1 and so forth so I'm going to plot these points now so I have uh, x equal 1.25 comma negative 2 it's going to be somewhere right around here uh, negative 1, uh, I'm sorry, 1 1.5 comma negative 1 is going to be right around here. 2 comma 0 is going to be right there. 3 comma 1 here, and then 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. Alright, so there's all my points. Let's go back to the graph. Now as you can see, we have no inverse from our graph that we can compare it to. Um, but going back to this one, we know that the x values, I'm sorry, the y values straighten out at, at positive 1, right? Well, because the x and the y changed, instead of the uh, y values straightening out at, at y equals 1 here, the x values are going to straighten out at y, I'm sorry, x equals 1. Remember, it's the inverse, and we want to check to see if that would make sense. Well, if I make my curve going down like this, is it possible that these would straighten out at x equals 1? Here's where x equals 1. And yeah, I think so. So I'm going to move this down, and it's going to curve down like that. And then this one will just go on like that. And that's all you got to do. So we're going to follow the same process with part b. I have my equation uh, y equals 1 half to the x power graphed. So I'm going to bring in my table again and I'm going to copy these points onto my paper. So there we go. Uh, now I'm going to plot all my points onto the coordinate system. That starts with negative 2 comma 4, so that's going to be right here. And then negative 1 comma 2 will be about right there. 0 comma 1, 1 comma 0.5, and then 2 comma 0.25, so it's going to be right there. And as you can see, it's, it's curving upwards so I could send it up like that 
I'm going to go back to my graph now. And as you can see on the graph, the y values are straightening out right here at about y equals 0. They're leveling off. So I, don't want, I want to make sure that my graph reflects that. So when we come back over here, I'm going to straighten it out right at about y equals 0. Okay, And that's, again, about as good as we could get. Now I'm going to create a table for my inverse. So I got my x and my y. That's going to be my inverse. And I want to switch spots with my x and my y. Those, those are basically change places. So now my uh, x value is going to be 4. This is going to be a negative 2. This one's going to be 2. This one's going to be negative 1, and so forth. Now I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. So I have 4, comma, negative 2. It's going to be about right there. And then 2, comma, negative 1 will be there. Um, 1, comma, 0, about there. And 0.5, comma, 0 will be... Or I mean to say 0.5 comma 1 will be about right here. And then 0.25 comma 2 is going to be right about there, almost on the y-axis, but not quite. Now, just like what we did here, we kind of compared the blue one to the green one. Now, we want to compare this blue one to the green one. And on the green one, we knew that the y values were straightening out at y equals 0. Again, the y and the x change place, so now the x values will probably be straightening out at x equals 0. So you could see as we curve up like this, are the x values approaching um, x equals 0? And they are, but we don't want to cross that axis. So that's going to go up like that, and then we could send this one down like that. So those will be you know, pretty acceptable um, rough sketches. And just as a heads up, uh, something to know about um, functions and their inverse is that they'll always be reflected over this line right here, y equals x. And if I graph this, I'm going to put it right through the origin. And if you're thinking, like, how do you get those red lines from just y equals x? Well, remember, uh, this is kind of referring to y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept. And because we're not adding or subtracting anything on the outside right here, we could assume that it's 0. So we would cross it at y equals 0. And then the invisible slope here is 1 over 1. So that's why this line goes up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, just like this one. So as you can see, the green one reflects over that red line. And then that creates the blue one. These are inverse of each other. And then same thing over here. This green one reflects over the red line, and it creates the blue one. Um, this one's a little bit harder to see, but hopefully you see the idea of inverses.